Let's take a look at how we can use one master open deals report without any filters to drive a dashboard and then add dashboard filters. So we're looking at our report right now. We've got an all open deals report. And this really is a report of all of our open deals. The only filter we have is that opportunity status is open. We're not filtering for stage or close date. Now, when we take a look at our report outline, it's important we think about building a report for our dashboard that we include any groupings we might wanna be able to access in our dashboard. So we've got close date, stage, and type. And also that we include any summarizations we might wanna use in our dashboard. Things like amount, expected revenue. Let's go ahead and add age as well. This means that these summari summarizations and groupings will be available for components that we're adding to our dashboard. So I feel good about this report. We can go ahead and save it and get to building our dashboard. So when we go to dashboards, we'll just click on new dashboard. And we're gonna create a brand new dashboard. We'll call this dashboard our pipeline dashboard and get to building it. So let's start by adding components. So when I add a component, I can select what report I wanna look at. And this is gonna look at all open deals because all of these components will look at all open deals. I'm going to select this metric component because I want to see right off the bat a number that represents the sum of all of the deals that are being pulled by this report. So we can see below the display type, we have our measure. Now this measure is important to notice because this is the summary options that we defined in our report. So if you want something to be available in the dashboard component, you can always go back and summarize that in your report. Titles are always important. They're an important tool for dashboard components, and especially so when you're adding a number of components from the same report. So now let's keep adding components with that same report, all open deals. So this one, we're going to select a donut chart. Select the donut chart. We have the option to choose what it should be segmented by. So all of those groupings that we selected earlier in our report, those are the options for how to segment this donut chart. So let's go ahead and title this deals by type. So we're gonna keep reflecting the same data set in different ways. And this is can be useful when you want to ensure that you've got one source of truth, that you're reflecting the same data. Now let's go ahead and add a lightning table. And when we add our lightning table, we want to include the sum of the amount for the opportunities we've grouped by the opportunity name. So we wanna make this kind of a leaderboard of our big deals. So let's go ahead and select sum of amount to sort it by. So again, all of those numerical fields that I summarized are now available for all these components. We'll select maybe the top 10 to display and we can call this top deals and maybe have a little fun with an emoji title. Awesome. So we're gonna keep adding this data and adding components and choosing different ways to reflect the data that's useful to us. And the thing that's important to notice is that how you define your groupings and how you include or check the boxes on those summaries in your reports gives you a lot of options for different and dynamic ways to reflect that data on the dashboard. So we're looking at the same set of data, but reflected in different ways. So as an admin or someone who builds a lot of reports, this can be really nice because it means maybe you just have one source report to maintain for a pipeline uh, report or pipeline dashboard. We'll call this one pipeline. Awesome, and we can go ahead and resize these a little bit, make them fit together. So with the spring 19 release, we have 12 columns and that just means these little uh, rectangles are smaller. And so you can have more flexibility with how you use your real estate. Let's add one more metric here, but instead of doing sum, let's do average. So we're gonna say our average amount of all of our open deals. Still have that shortened number and let's just call this average deal size. Awesome. So this is just getting started on our dashboard. Um, we're probably gonna add more components later, but I wanna filter these now, because remember that report has no filters applied to it besides open deals. So we wanna make this a really useful dashboard so our users can filter. So let's go ahead and add some filters with the filter button. And the first filter we're gonna add is probability. So all the fields that are available on your report, pretty much available for filters. So we've got our field that we're gonna filter for probability. We're gonna display it as it is with probability. And I have these handy operators um, that make it easy for me to write the, uh, the formulas here. So perfect. So we're gonna have greater than 15 and we can select our display text that's gonna look different 
um, to make sure that whoever is selecting this on the actual dashboard, the end user knows what option they're selecting. So we'll just add a few more greater than um, probability values here. So we'll do a greater than 50 and also for our top deals, a greater than 80. So we've added all of those various filter values. Now something changed about the components when they added the filter to the dashboard. Now we have this little funnel on all of the different components and this funnel is telling us for that filter, that first filter of probability, this is looking at for this component, the field of probability. Now I only have one field like that, so it's grayed out because there's no other fields that I can select, but it's letting me know exactly for each component, which is the report field that it's filtering by. And some more filters. So we've added our probability filter, but I also didn't filter this report by dates at all. So I wanna add a date filter. So in add filter, I look for date and I can see there's a lot of date fields that are available in these reports. So I'm gonna select close date. I'll display it, just the field name, close date. And for date fields, it's really useful to use relative date filters because this allows you to create evergreen reports and dashboards that don't need to be updated constantly. And you can add relative date filters like next 30 days in that common language, next 90 days, and I can select my display if I want it to be different. But I can also use things like our fiscal quarter. So I can select, for example, next, next fiscal quarter. And this is really useful to make these filter dashboards so you don't have a bunch of different reports like say, this quarter's deals or next quarter's deals. Now, what if you wanna look at a couple of dates, relative dates combined together? Well, we have next fiscal year, but let's also include more dates like this fiscal year. So th at this time, I might wanna change my display text because I've got next fiscal year, comma, this fiscal year is my default display text. So you can write the display text, whatever you think will be most useful for your users, um, like this in next fiscal years and go ahead and add second filter, let's take a look at that funnel on the component again. Now I see filter two has been added and it's telling me for this component that filter two is looking at the close date field on the report behind that component, but I can see all those other options that were available to me as well. So when we are finished with our dashboard, we've added our filters, we've added our components. I have those filters available to any end user that's engaging with this dashboard. So I have all of my components that are looking at that large unfiltered report, all open deals. And then as users are engaging with the dashboard, they can use these filters like probability greater than 15% or add filters like close date filters. Filters can be used on their own or together. That's how you can use one master source report without filters along with dashboard filters and multiple types of components to build a effective and user-friendly dashboard.